Welcome to Summon. We got some current events for us today, actually. Uh, something different in America, the land of religious freedom. That is, as long as your religion is one form of the Abrahamic ones. But if you're any of the many thousands of pagan religions in the world, no one really gives a shit about your religious freedom. But today we have some good news. In the state of Maine, and the U.S. is voting on making uh, open-air cremation funerals legal. Uh, so all these online articles talking about this Vikings-style funeral, and as usual, the mainstream media gets a lot of things wrong. So in this video, I'm clearing up some of the misconceptions and telling you what the real purpose of this funeral is. This. So I already did a video where I go over every single source uh, that we have uh, that uh, mention uh, Viking uh, burning ship funeral that's so famous. Um, all of those sources from ancient times. Watch that video uh, for more in-depth uh, description. But uh, basically there are only three records of this ship burning funeral ever happening and two of these are kind of semi or full-on mythological. So only one real account. Uh, there is no, also no archaeological evidence of this funeral, but you know, archaeologists aren't exactly scouring the seafloor around the coast looking for burned ships. So if they put on a diving suit and did some looking, I'm sure they would find some things. But uh, yeah, either way, this funeral was not super common. And this is the biggest misconception. It was uh, very, very rare, most likely. Far more common types of funerals were uh, burial mounds and just normal funeral pyres, uh, which is also relevant to this uh, because it, it will accept all open-air cremations in the state of Maine. Uh, so absolutely great for our religion and any other religions that do outdoor cremation like this. Now the difference between these types of funerals is important to know. Originally in the Old Norse world, and all over the world pretty much, uh, we, uh, we, we did these kind of open burial mounds. We find a lot more of these in Scandinavia from uh, before the time of uh, Jesus and our common area dating and um, uh, many thousands of years before this, there's these burial mounds. Uh, they're sometimes called dolmens in other parts of Europe, but um, yeah, this type of burial was used all over by the Indo-European people originally. Then as we get into the Iron Age in Scandinavia and all the way up until the Viking Age, we start to see a lot more of these cremation type funerals on the funeral pyre. This is in both archaeological evidence and uh, written uh, sources from the ancient texts. Uh, so the belief is that these cremation funerals were a way to ensure a fast trip through the realm of the dead in order to be reincarnated as fast as possible. Uh, so the Norse, they believed in reincarnation, uh, like many other pagan religions around the world, and uh, like that, uh, you could not be reincarnated until your body was fully decomposed. Except for the bones. The bones, of course, take a, a lot longer to decompose. It was just your hamad that needed to decompose. Basically the meat on your, on your bones, your outer form and one of the parts to your soul. So they were cremated in order for their soul to be free as fast as possible and to be reincarnated. And this was reserved for the most loved and cherished people, of course. Uh, as we see in the stories, it was usually uh, kings or heroes that got this type of funeral. Uh, we see the opposite being true with these bog burials. Uh, if you find a body in a bog, it takes tens of thousands of years to decompose sometimes. So especially wicked people were thrown into these bogs so that their body would take forever to decompose. And the soul of these people would not... Uh, pass on and be able to be reincarnated. Then, as we get past the Iron Age and into the Viking Age, we see a lot of different funerals actually, uh, really diverse depending on where they were, uh, cremations, burial mounds, and just basic burials too, people getting buried uh, in the ground, um, uh, sometimes uh, with animals uh, or, or other objects. So yeah, the main point is that the Norse had many, many different types of funerals and they were all done differently, uh, uh, and, but everything had a specific purpose related to the afterlife and reincarnation process. Uh, everything was done for a reason, and there wasn't just one Viking funeral. So what is the point of this ship? Uh, what is the point of uh, lighting this ship on fire and pushing it out to sea as a funeral? Well, we can look at this two ways. Uh, first, we see a lot of ship burials in Scandinavia, but also other Germanic parts of Europe. 
some very famous ones here. Um, these burials with a ship is possibly representative of uh, the mother's womb. In our myths, we are pretty sure that the fertility god Freyr, he has a ship, and it represents the mother's womb. I did a video about that with all the sources and everything. Check it out if you like. So these people were buried in the ship to uh, simulate the new soul entering the mother's womb when it was reincarnated. Uh, we also find many examples in Scandinavia and all over the world of people being buried in this like fetal-like position. Also uh, simulating being in the mother's womb, dying, going straight to the womb. And we find burials like this all over the world and it's believed to be a clear indication that the people believed in reincarnation wherever it is. So that is the reasons for the ship burial. But what about setting the ship on fire and pushing it out to sea? Well, the reason I just spoke of could apply here too, that they put the body in the ship in order to simulate uh, uh, the soul going back to the mother's womb. But also it's something else. And this is just my theory. You're not going to read about this anywhere else. But I think it's pretty clear that humans sent these flaming ships out to sea for their funeral in order to send the person's soul back to their homeland. Uh, all of the attestations of this uh, uh, funeral um, uh, ship burial thing from the literature, it happened when the person dying was away from their homeland. Beowulf is one of the most famous ones when Beowulf was a, uh, not actually Beowulf, but I think it was King Hrothgar in that poem who uh, uh, got this specific funeral away from his home, then even Fadlam and other accounts of the Vikings in Eastern Europe, uh, they were away from their homes, and Baldur's funeral as well. Uh, that's the only three mentions of this funeral, and that's what they all have in common. So this ship-burning funeral, just in my opinion, is a way to send the person's soul back to his homeland so they can be reincarnated as one of their own people and family. Uh, so this is why it was done, pretty sure. So yeah, uh, this law is very good for us right now. I am living away from my homeland as well, so if I die, I would like to have this kind of funeral that they are speaking about legalizing in Maine. But that's just me. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you learned something new, but that's it for today. Vi ses nästa gång.